friendship is the basis of a good marriage. We, before we're lovers, we should be friends. And so we should, in fact, we should be best friends. God designed marriage to where you have a lifelong partnership with your best friend. And that is a wonderful thing. Now, some people aren't experiencing that right now, or maybe you never did. There are a couple of problems that a lot of people experience related to being best friends with their spouse. And the first is uh, an improper courtship. There was something wrong with their courtship. This happens a lot of times because many times we just don't know how to court and we're, maybe we're not saved when we're dating or something like that. But the, the biggest problem that people have is becoming too sexual too soon. And I wanna say it one more time. Before we're lovers, we should be friends. And I'm not talking about friends for a couple of days. I'm talking about friends for a year or two. Friends until we're married. God is not a prude. He's not against fun. He created sex and he created it to be a lot of fun and a wonderful blessing. But understand this, whenever you start dating and the temptation is there to become sexual and it might be more the men that are a, a boyfriend or, or a fiance that's pressuring a woman to be sexual, the statistics are going up of young people becoming sexual sooner and uh, young girls willing to have sex with someone that they're dating casually, that they're dating you know, seriously or whatever. And I wanna say this, I do not want to be inappropriate, but I just I wanna say something because our society, we have a cohabiting, immoral society that does not regard sex the way the Bible says that they should. And I wanna say it again, God is wise, he's not a fuddy-duddy. And what God understands is this, when you date properly in a non-sexual way, it creates relationship skills and emotional strength in that relationship that will provide a foundation for your marriage from that point forward. And sex then becomes the, you know, the, uh, uh, the blessing at the end of the road that you share then from that point forward as the reward of a, a journey well-traveled, okay? But what happens so often is you just begin the relationship. And then there's, because you're attracted to one another and sometimes because of the pressure of the, of the young man or something, a, a woman fears that if she doesn't give him sex that she's gonna lose the relationship and he's gonna go somewhere else. Now, I wanna say this now. Again, I, I wanna be careful in the way I say this, but I wanna say it because there's so much pain caused by this issue. And, and that's the reason I'm saying it. I'm, I'm gonna talk to the young ladies because they're more sane in this area and they're the enforcers in this area. Young ladies, okay, and women who may be dating or whatever like that. Now, um, you're attractive, you're beautiful, God made you that way. And a young man's gonna be attracted to you. And when you're dating him, he's gonna want sex. And, and here, here's what you need to say to him, okay? And that is, if he's the right one. Now, first of all, if you're just casually dating him, just tell him he doesn't have a one in a million chance, ever. And if he pressures you, you'll never date him again. And if that causes him to go away, it just proves he's a jerk. And it proves what he's after, okay? And you can, you know, play this tape for him. Um, <laughs> but let's just say that you're serious and you believe he is the right one. That, that still means you should not have sex. If you give him sex, you will create an emotionally lazy, over-sexualized man who will be a poor husband and a poor father. God's not a fuddy-duddy, he knows what he's doing. And young ladies, it ought to be, a, young men should honor women and their sexuality and not pressure them for that. But if he does pressure you, and even you have the desire, I'm saying, there's a reason for waiting. And that reason is there are consequences to sex, diseases, pregnancy, all kinds of things like that. And you don't know if he's gonna stick around and father that child until he puts a big gaudy ring on your finger and says he loves you in front of a bunch of people. And that's what a wedding is. You don't know he's gonna stick around. And he'll abandon you if you're not careful. So here's what you say to that young man who's dating you or that man that's dating you. I'll make you a deal. You make me a bride, I'll make you a baby but you don't have a snowball's chance of having sex with me before you marry me. And if that causes you to go away, you're not the man I've been praying for. Okay, I'll be nice for the rest of the message. I just needed to say that. But 
People, people in our society, it ruins the friendship when you become too sexual too soon. It could be that you didn't have a long enough courtship period and you say, well, what's long enough courtship period? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of, you know, it it's depends on the individual and the circumstances. I say two weeks isn't long enough. But I would say six months to two years is a, is a good time frame. Some people date longer than that. Uh, some people don't date quite that long. But you need to date long enough to know a person's character and to see them in different circumstances where you see them in good times and bad times and you see their character tested and you're able to talk to their friends and family and find out what they're really like. And so it's, a, it's an important time to find the, the character of the individual that you're about to commit your life to. Sometimes we, we marry too soon. Sometimes we become too sexual too soon. Sometimes we, we just don't have the right courtship experience so we don't get the foundation right. It can be repaired and I'm not saying anything I'm saying to condemn anybody, I'm saying you can repair it. If you didn't do it right before you got married, you can repair it. And for those of you that are not married, do it right and you'll have a lifelong blessing because you laid that foundation properly. We're able to come to you uh, with this program. We hope that you're being blessed by this program, but we're able to come to you because we have a group of people that support us financially every month and they're called our rock solid partners. They literally are the financial backbone of this ministry. Thousands of people across America who give to us every month. And we have several, diff several different levels that you can give at. And for that, you get a special resource that we only give to our partners. And it's called our Dream Marriage Library. We produce it specially every month. Karen and I produce this. It's the best of my teachings. It's the best of our seminars. It's the best of what we have that comes, first of all, to our rock solid partners. And so we want you to be a rock solid partner. And for that, we're gonna bless you with this special resource. Here's how you can be a partner. Take a stand for your marriage and become a rock solid partner today. Join at the $14 level and you'll receive online access to the Dream Marriage Library with a new message each month. At the $28 level, you'll also receive each month's lesson on CD and DVD. And join at the $56 per month level and we'll add exclusive partner perks, including invitation-only access to live phone seminars and exclusive Marriage Today events. Become a rock solid partner today. Thank you for joining us. Partner with Marriage Today and receive the series, Our Secret Paradise. Marriage Today's latest book, Happy Happy Love, will supercharge your marriage with practical tips, wisdom, and inspiration for every stage of marriage. Visit happylovebook.com. Follow your interests and get social by connecting with Jimmy and Karen and the Ministry of Marriage Today on Twitter. And don't forget, become a rock solid partner and receive the Dream Marriage Library. There's a rock solid partner level to fit every need.